And honesty hurts and a lot of people they just shy away from the truth because they would rather be ignorant than have someone like me right now in your face telling you that you're being a loser for staying with them. Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. I have a green screen because I was just filming my main channel video. But anyways, I'm going to tell you how to get over anyone, how to get over a heartbreak, a breakup, but you got to follow all of my steps. Immediately go no contact. You cannot talk to them. You cannot stalk them on their social media. Out of sight, out of mind. Even though we know it won't be out of mind because you will be thinking of them and that's only natural. And don't forget that when you're in a relationship or a situationship, anything really, a lot of what you're feeling is like a drug withdrawal. It's like a drug addiction. It's the oxytocin, the dopamine, the serotonin going crazy. They just want this person. The chemicals are dying for this person right now. When I went through my breakup, I literally thought I was gonna die. It was that bad. I was like, if I get back with him, I will die. If I don't get back with him, I will also die. And then give it two weeks, my oxytocin went down, whatever. I pretty much didn't care about him anymore. Like I was still healing for a while, but I didn't feel like I was dying. I stopped crying. That's also because I went no contact. So I think a lot of it at the beginning, is just a mind battle. That's why when you hook up with someone, if you just want to have sex, you don't want to catch feelings or get in a situation ship, then don't hug them. Don't do anything which is going to bond you to them. Sex can bond you, of course, but you're going to bond further if you're sharing intimate details or you're cuddling afterwards. You know, try to keep that to a minimum. Also know that if you're going through a rough breakup, it's likely that every single week you're going to feel very different. You'll have new clarity on the situation. That's what happened to me. And you don't need closure. Closure is a myth because what happens? So you're thinking, okay, I really need closure from this person. And then you message them. Perhaps in the moment you get the closure, but guess what? You're going to ruminate over what they said for the next week. And there'll be something in what that person said that will make you go, wait, what? I need closure on this now. And it will just be ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. And I promise you that you will get closure from yourself over time. It's really like a waiting game, but you also have to consciously make the decision to heal. If you just want to mope, cry, stalk them, it will be a million times more difficult to get over this person. And one thing about the internet now is that I feel like, especially on TikTok, it's such a joke to not be over your ex. Like you see the TikToks and people are like, when I meet a new person, that's perfect for me, but they don't know I'm in love with my ex or on my wedding day, checking the story of that one situation ship that ghosted me. Like it's so normalized nowadays and I don't think it should be. If this person broke up with you or they were disrespectful to you in any way, shape or form, don't even say a word to them. If they cheated on you, especially, you better never, ever, ever get back with them. Disrespect equals GTFO immediately, <laughs> okay? Don't let it slide. The moment someone disrespects you, they will do it again and again and again. Especially if this is happening at the beginning of the relationship or the beginning of the dating stage. Because this is when they should be putting their best foot forward. And if they can't even put their best foot forward, imagine how it will be later on. Also, people are always revealing themselves in little subtle ways. Not too long ago, I was casually like speaking to this guy who did come from a very, very wealthy family, but you would never ever know he was rich because he was so low key. And man, he really outed himself about what a sexist, misogynistic pig he was because I told him my job. I didn't tell him I did YouTube. I told him, yeah, I work in marketing, which I do. He forgot about this, forgot. And then he DMs me, he asks me again, what do you do? And he goes, oh yeah, you do that jewelry making thing, right? You make jewelry, can you make me a ring? FYI, he's talking about my En Route collaboration, which is not my company. But if he thought this was my company, En Route looks like a very established company. Yet he demeaned it by saying, you make jewelry, can you hand make me some rings? I said, no, that's not my job, it's a collaboration I did. His response, sent me into orbit. He said, women have it so easy. You live life on easy mode. And then he proceeded to say, when I didn't reply, if we can't have 
this banter and I can and I can't say little sarcastic remarks like this and I don't think it's gonna work and I was like no shit because why would I want to date a misogynistic pig also who are you to say women live life in easy mode when you live off your parents money you're a trust fund baby okay how someone does one thing is how they are gonna do everything you have to analyze how someone does one thing really and then you can extrapolate that into other circumstances when I first met one of my exes, he had a lot of subtle red flags, but I brought them up to him and he said, I don't really know these things, you know, my parents didn't teach me about this. It will only get better, Simone. I will change. And did it get better? Hell no. The little tiny things I saw lasted throughout the relationship. And yeah, I extrapolated. It happened in different circumstances. And ladies, if he cheats on you, men, if she cheats on you, if you get back with them, you are doing the biggest disservice to yourself. You are saying, I'm not worthy of respect, love, or loyalty. You can't get back with them. I don't care how much you love them. They don't love you. Dude, it's so embarrassing. Like, I'm embarrassed if you get back with an ex that cheats on you. I know how hard it is to walk away from people, especially because, you know, we talked about the oxytocin, the dopamine. Just think of it like a drug addiction, because technically it is. You have to treat it like a drug addiction almost. Cut them off. You don't want to see them. They're dead to you. Also, I feel like it should be really easy to get over someone that doesn't treat you right, but I completely understand especially women we we bond more quickly and easily than men and we if we like a guy we try to mold them to our ideals and i think that's something you actually have to consciously be like what am i doing do i like this person and think logically and not let your heart override the brain and what i do is i go into my notes and i write out the red flags i do the whole pros cons list so sometimes we need to be conscious of who we like. Also, don't let anyone tell you that you're not going to find someone better than them. You 100% will, especially if they were crap. You really can only go up from here unless you're not learning from your mistakes or you just have really poor taste. Some people pride themselves on poor taste. Like one of my friends, she has the literal worst taste in guys and she loves it. She loves getting heartbroken. She loves getting cheated on. And I said, girlfriend, you need to go to therapy. Because one day this will bite you in the ass. Like it may be fun in your 20s, but it's not going to be fun later on. I think some people just enjoy playing the victim, really. I also don't recommend going and getting a rebound. I feel like the main difference between how men and women heal is that men will go get under someone else in order to get over someone. Women, we... Most of us, we tend to heal peacefully with our friends, not on a dating app. And that is why the studies which have shown guys never really get over their exes because they just push the pain down. They get on top of someone else. But girls, we sort through our emotions and we deal with it. We confront the pain. And that's always the best way to get over a breakup because you don't want to be lingering over someone years and years later. One thing that I did during my breakup was I never tried to distract myself. In fact, it made me feel more and more pain because when the distraction was gone, I had to sit there and think about it and the pain would hit me even harder. So I really just allowed myself to sit with my emotions and deal with it. And I wasn't with friends all the time because friends are just another distraction. And ultimately you're gonna be alone at the end of the day. And when you're alone, you don't wanna be afraid of that. How do I get over a crush? First of all, crushes are actually a severe waste of time when you think about it, because they offer nothing but like a little excitement in your life. Crushes do more bad than they do good because they just take time away from your life. And to be honest, if I have a crush on someone, it's just the hormones. It's just the oxytocin, the dopamine, the chemicals. Two, if I have a crush on someone and I'm not pursuing them or they're not pursuing me, I know they're probably not good for me. Because best believe, 
if I found the right man, that's not going to be a crush. That's going to be my husband. So if you want to get over your crush, a situation ship, do the rational thinking. Like, make the list of things you don't like about them, the red flags, why they're incompatible to you, what you deserve, what qualities do you want in a partner. And something I also write out is, if I date this person, or if I stay with them, what disservice am I doing to myself? What am I saying about myself? So let's say you stay with someone that is cheating on you, but you love him so much you can't leave, okay. I would say, by staying with him, I'm demonstrating that I don't respect myself. I'm demonstrating I hate myself. I will be miserable. Deep inside, I know I will never trust him. You have to be brutally honest. And honesty hurts. And a lot of people, they just shy away from the truth because they would rather be ignorant than have someone like me right now in your face telling you that you're being a loser for staying with them. But you really just got to get through the first couple of weeks. I'm telling you, that is when... The addiction will start to die if you don't feed it. But it's absolutely crucial you go no contact. Block them and never, ever unblock them again. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I feel like I went on a couple of tangents here. Don't forget to subscribe to my main channel. And I will see you very, very shortly.